I'm Kate Costa with New Venture Mentor, and this is your weekly dose of entrepreneurship news. First up, we have an update to a story that I reported on in an earlier video about the federal reimbursement cap for contractor salaries being raised to $763,029 per year. Now remember, this is just a cap on what the federal government will reimburse, not a cap on everything that the contractor employee can make. So I thought it was a bit ridiculous. And apparently, the Senate Armed Forces Committee agreed because it approved a plan to set this cap at $230,700 per defense contractor employee on Tuesday. For the record, that's the same as the Vice President of the United States salary, even though it's over half a million dollars below the original cap. Also in Washington, Joe Jordan, the administrator of the Office of Federal Procurement Policy, released a memo in conjunction with the SBA outlining six steps designed to aid small businesses in the federal government contracting process. The memo ordered agencies to consider using small business set-asides on multiple award contracts, think about actually requiring these set-asides for agencies falling short of small business procurement goals, modifying multiple award contracts to better provide for the set-asides, requiring documentation about how set-asides were considered, requiring agency feedback to the SBA about multiple award contract set-asides, and requiring procurement personnel to take advantage of training provided by the GSA. Heading over to the private sector, Google grabbed multiple headlines this week. Firstly, rumor has it that Google is preparing a new ad push into the small business space, integrating its Google Plus social network, small businesses pages there, and newly acquired technology to increase communication and interaction between small businesses and their potential customers. It also reportedly plans to use mobile phones to allow customers to make purchases and earn loyalty points. How this will all turn out remains to be seen for now, but the effort could be launched as early as next month, so hopefully we won't be waiting with bated breath for too long. As a precursor, G Plus has already rolled out a new tab that provides info on local businesses and is integrated with Google's other services. So, if you're a small business with a Google Places for Business listing and a Google Plus user does a relevant search on the G Plus network, your small business's info, including photos, reviews, hours of operation, and anything else you have on your profile, will be shown to that user. The new tab seems to be a net positive for small business owners, as it provides another opportunity for your small business to get in front of potential customers, though it could hurt you if you have bad reviews that get shown. So make sure that you're always providing great quality and great service so that you'll only get high marks and rave reviews. Finally, just as the press was buzzing about Apple's reported plans to drop Google Maps from the iPhone, Google Maps came out with some new features including 3D modeling and the ability to use Google Maps offline to try to secure its dominance as everybody's go-to mobile map. Now, it doesn't sound like the Google updates will have much effect on small business, but if Apple stops using Google Maps and creates its own mapping system, it may require small business owners to do some work to make sure that they show up in map search results on the iPhone or iPad, just as many small business owners had to do to appear in Google Maps search results in order for them to retain access to all of those iPhone users out there. That's it for this week's installment of Entrepreneurship News. Remember to share your opinion with the SEC and the SBA about how to implement certain provisions of the JOBS Act. And subscribe to this channel and follow me on Twitter for the latest entrepreneurship news as well as tips, tricks, and tutorials to help your small business grow. Mm -hmm.